One of the biggest challenges with e-ink tablets can be that the content on them feels siloed. Like the content's stuck there and not quite as portable as it otherwise should be. Or maybe you, like me, find yourself having to decide, should I write this on my tablet or should I type it on my computer based on whether I think I'm going to have to share it with someone or not. I believe a big factor in solving this problem is quality handwriting conversion, and more specifically the accuracy and convenience of using it. In this video, with the help of my wife Marshy, we're going to try out the handwriting conversion on six different tablets and figure out how realistic it is to use each of those. Stick around. So which devices are we going to be covering? We're going to start with the Kindle Scribe, then check out the Supernote, the Books line of devices with the Tab X and the Note Air 2, and then we'll round it out by checking out the iPad with Good Notes, and then we'll finish up with the Remarkable 2. So a bit on the methodology and my thesis behind all of this. My thought here is handwriting conversions value is based on a combination of the accuracy or trustworthiness of it combined with how long it takes to use it where how long it takes to use it is a combination of how long it takes to perform the actual conversion, how long it takes to get that content from the device onto your computer, and then ultimately how much time do you spend cleaning up errors before you can ship that content to its final destination. Marshy and I are gonna write 50 word passages on each of the six tablets, and then we're gonna compare how many errors the handwriting conversion makes in each of those passages. We're also gonna look at the conversion accuracy across both of our handwriting styles as a proxy of how likely it is to work for your handwriting. She uses a more cursive style handwriting and mine is some combination of cursive and standard handwriting. Lastly, we'll track how long the conversion takes, how long it takes to get the content from the device onto my MacBook, and then how long it takes to edit the document and consider it done. Ready? Let's go. Let's first start with the Kindle Scribe, which I would consider the underdog because it lacks any native handwriting conversion on the device itself. But a while back, someone had recommended to me to try out Google Keep for OCR. And so this seemed like the perfect opportunity to see if that could salvage the fact that the Kindle Scribe is woefully ill-prepared in this department. So let's give it a shot. All right, so we're gonna send it to my email address. And I can't remember whether this does the entire document or not, so I will send it a second time just in case. All right, it looks like I got that email. So that was pretty quick. So let's check my email. It actually wasn't that, but whatever. There we go. Now we've got it. So let's download that and let's see. There we go. Those are our files. So it comes over as a PDF, which should be just fine. Let me download that just so I'll have it. We'll call this scribe. So now let's go to google.com. And here's some junk where I was testing this a while back. So let's open a new note and let's see if it can handle this PDF. All right, so it can't handle the PDF natively. So in order to get it into here, we're gonna have to do some magic first. So let's just open the screenshots and see if we do it at native resolution, how does it do? So can we now paste this into Google Keep? We cannot, but perhaps we can screenshot it and then drag it in there. And let's see what this does. So we now have a note, but we now need to ask it to grab image text. And all right, that's something. This is on Marshy's handwriting, so we'll start with that. I don't know where this we came from, so that's one issue. Half of my library, I didn't have a period, so that's two issues are old books, because I like seeing how people thought about their world three at their time so that I don't get big headed about something. We, they have B instead of we. It's missing the just. So it seemed like it messed up this big headed and something. 
might have discovered 10 and I can, I don't know where that period came from, 11, just is down there, 12, go next period, because you can see who got their staff instead of stuff, 13, right, and most of the people who got stuff wrong. So this one's a little bit of a mess. I, I would say it's at least 13 incorrect. This is probably not something I can consider myself seriously using. Let's check out my handwriting just to see if it did anything a little bit differently for that. So let's go back to that PDF in preview and go to that second page. We'll zoom in sort of as far as we can get it. And then we'll screenshot that. Go back to Google Keep. We've got a round trip through Finder. Drop that in there. It's not ready to grab the image text there. All right, here we go. All right, I don't know where it got this hubbub. That, that's a fun little one. All right, here we go. So I have to count that one against them. That one doesn't look right. So half of my library are old instead of dull to two books because I like instead of live Three, seeing how people thought about their world at their time. So I don't get too big headed about something we just discovered and I can be humble about where we might go next. Because you can see who got stuff right and most of the, it rearranges its people. So four, who gets stuff wrong. So a little bit better, I'm not really sure why it's got all these carriage returns that seem unnecessary, but quite a bit better. So let me write that down. So 13 wrong with cursive. And was it five wrong with a hybrid? The other thing here is this workflow is a little bit janky. I have to send a PDF to my email. I have to grab that PDF out of my email. I have to download it. I have to screenshot the piece of it that I need. I then paste that into Google Keep. I then get the text conversion and then I can go to Notion. So this is pretty involved. So I guess technically possible in a pinch, but not something I'd recommend using on a daily basis. So there you go. Next up, let's grab the super note. So the super note functions a little bit differently where you actually put your notebook into real-time recognition mode and then it's constantly running this recognition in the background as you write. So this should mean for really fast export times, but then we'll have the fun process of trying to figure out how to actually get the text off of the super note onto my computer. So let's go check it out. So you'll see down here at the bottom, there's this A icon. And if I tap on that, it's already recognized, which is pretty darn awesome. Like that's pretty instant. And I would argue is exactly how you'd want it to work if you're gonna do this often. The other nice piece of this is because it's indexing in real time, you can now search across your entire notebook. So that gets really cool if you wanna keep one long form notebook. And then if you ever wonder, when did I write about something in particular, you can just search for that phrase and then find it, which is really handy. And as far as I know, the Supernote, I think is the only one who does that well. I think the books is starting to do it, but it's not quite there. And the Remarkable doesn't have that at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at the accuracy. So half of my books are old books because I like seeing how people thought about their world at their time. So I don't get big headed about something we just discovered, so it messed up discovered. That can be humble about where we might go next. Because, it says po cause, it should have been because. You can see who got stuff right and most of the people who got stuff wrong. So I would argue the accuracy there was pretty darn good. I mean, two mistakes out of 59 words could always be better, but this is something that I think is usable from an accuracy perspective. So then let's go to export. So this is where things get a little bit messy on the super note. We have to go to docx format or word document format, and then we'll go ahead and hit export. And then let's just go to reformat. And so now we have a Word document, but the issue is it's on the Supernote itself. 
So now we have to go grab a cable, plug it in, and then go get the file off of our device. So let's hit allow. And it is an Android device, so it needs the Android file transfer app on the Mac. And then we go to export, handwriting test. Here's my Word document. Can't preview it because it's not actually on my system yet. Let's copy that file over. We'll call this super note. And then we can grab the text out of here and paste it into Notion. Overall, not too bad. I would love to not have to plug the device in to get the text off of it, but this is something where I could actually see myself doing it if I wasn't doing this every day. The Supernote team could make this a lot easier if they allowed you to export this to Supernote Cloud. Well, I guess theoretically it might be in Supernote Cloud. So I guess, let me, let me rewind a little bit. So I can either plug it in for really quick access or I can export it and then grab it off Supernote Cloud or theoretically off Google Drive once that comes out of beta and becomes reliable. So it's not quite there yet, but I can see how the pieces could come together where this could be something that's really viable and exciting. We never did the recognition on my handwriting. So let's jump over there and make sure that was viable. So I don't get big headed about something we just discovered and I can be humble about where we might go next. It's missing a period, but probably something I could get, get over because you can see who plus stuff right and most of the people who got stuff wrong. I have a hard time docking them for that missed period, but that git is definitely a problem. So let's call it two mistakes on my handwriting. So three mistakes on Marshy's and two on mine. Overall, not too bad. Next up are the two books tablets and I'm expecting them to perform almost identically, but we'll check them just in case they're not. So we're here on the tab X first and how we invoke handwriting recognition is through this AI button and then it's gonna convert, and then we'll be able to see the answers right here. And that took a second, but it wasn't slow by any means. So half of my library are old books because I like seeing how people thought about their world at their time, so that I don't get big headed about something we just discovered and I can be humble about where we might go next. So yeah, that's perfect. So now we can copy, now it's on the clipboard. So we've got a handful of ways we could do that now. So we throw it into Todoist. I guess, can I share? Hmm. So we go back into notes. Can I just share this, the text natively? Oh, I can, hold on, maybe, maybe. Okay, so I can't share the text natively. So I have the text on my clipboard, but I don't have a great way to share it from the notes app. So I'm going to need to go to a different notes app to get that off. So I do use Todoist. So theoretically, I could just go in here and add a to do. So I had an issue about a week ago where I actually had to re-image the books tab X completely from scratch. And so I don't actually have Todoist on here. So let's see if we can get clever and figure out a way to get the text off of here. So before we worry about getting all the text off, let's also do an accuracy check on my handwriting. So I know that looked really instant, but I think this is because I've already pulled it up. It's gonna take about the same amount of time that it took on the previous one. My guess is about 10, 15, 20 seconds. So half of my books are old books because I like seeing how people thought about their world at their time. So that I don't get too big headed about something we just discovered. I can be humble about where we might go next because you can see who got their stuff right and most of the people who got their stuff wrong. So far the books is 100% on both. So that's pretty amazing. Zero issues on my handwriting, zero. zero issues on Marshy's. That's really impressive. Overall, really, really nice. So I don't have to do this on this device. So let me switch over to the Note Air 2 and we'll pull it up over there. So let's go over to notes on here. And I assume that this is gonna function exactly the same. So let's go over to handwriting test. Well, I guess let's make sure the Note Air 2 is doing the same thing. So we'll go in here. We'll go to AI recognition. 
gonna do its conversion. There we go. Half of my library are old books because I like seeing how people thought about their world at their time. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Again, still perfect. Really great. So let's copy the text here. All right. So we can just load it up here. Go to to-do list. Paste it in as a task. I don't want six, six tasks, single task. All right, it doesn't handle paragraph returns well. I feel like if I had a good note sharing app, then this wouldn't be nearly as painful, but I don't have this workflow set up and I have to spend time setting it up, which is a bit annoying. So handwriting. All right, so that's there now. I can now go over to Todoist. And there's my text over in Todoist. I can then copy it out and I'm good to go. So with the books, the accuracy is fantastic, but getting the text off can be a bit painful, at least on the Mac. I'm sure there's an app I can use that syncs in real time. I mean, I guess I could have even just loaded Notion up directly on the device and that would work. But that's a little bit more painful than I think it ideally is. I have to copy the text, maybe switch apps, and then do it. Again, not bad, but it's just more steps that I'd like, and for whatever reason just isn't as comfortable for me. So that's the books device. Great accuracy, a little bit tricky to get the content off quickly and easily. Next up, I have the iPad because everyone, for whatever reason, wants to compare these e-ink tablets and the iPad. And so we might as well throw it in the running. I guess I'll start off by saying both myself and Marshy, my wife, both instantly had a moment of disgust when we had to write on the iPad after having written on all the ink tablets. So take that for what it is. Um, that's sort of my bias. And also apparently my wife who doesn't care about ink tablets, also her bias. So anyway, take that for what it is. So this is in Good Notes, and again, the handwriting is not as clear because writing on the iPad is more challenging. And so you might have to zoom in a little bit more. Overall, just not a very comfortable experience. The good news is Good Notes does have good OCR support. So if you grab the lasso, select some text, tap on it, you can hit convert. And that looked a little weird, but whatever. Let's give it a go. Convert. Half of my library are old books because I like seeing how people thought about their world at their time. So I don't nine capped big headed about something to he humble discard right, five now and do in might. We'll call that seven go next because you dash can see who got stuff right and most of the people who got stay warring. So nine, not, not great in that regard. Where this is really nice is I can hit share and copy and it's on my clipboard and I can come over to my Mac and paste the text and it looks all right. So nine inaccuracies out of 59 words, but speed getting the content off is really good. So you're gonna have to check your individual handwriting and see how that goes for you. But getting things off the device will not be a problem. The accuracy might. Let's go check my handwriting and see the consistency. So fresh lasso. Bert. Half of my library are old books, apostrophe S. Yes. I didn't do an apostrophe S. Yes. Because I like seeing nor people thought about their world at their time so that I don't get big headed about something we just discovered. I can be humble about where we might go next. 
And as you can see, who got shop right and most of the people who got stuff wrong. So again, I can share, copy, and then come over here to Notion on my Mac and paste. And that pasted in cleanly. I now just have to go through this and double check it. Old books, because I like seeing how people thought about their world at the time. So I don't get, yep, and then stuff. I mean, if you've got good spell check that you trust, could work in a pinch, but again, you're still gonna have to be pretty mindful of it to make sure there aren't a lot of glaring issues. So three errors on mine out of 59, and I think Marshy's was nine errors, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to go back and watch the video and make sure. So there's the iPad. All right, and last up is the Remarkable. The Remarkable is fairly straightforward. You open the menu, you hit share, and you say convert notes to text and then it converts. All right, and it adds a page. Half of my library are old books because I like seeing how people thought about their world at their time. So that I don't get big headed about something we just discovered, I can be humble about where we might go next. Because you can see who got stuff right and most of the people who got stuff wrong. Where this gets really nice is to get the actual text, I just close out and then I open the Remarkable app on my computer. and I copy the text. So for me, I think that's personally the easiest and the accuracy in this case was pretty good. Let's go double check my handwriting just to make sure that it's consistent. So again, we'll do the same steps. Share, convert notes to text. There we go, let's take a look. Half of my library are old books because I like by how. So that's one. People thought about their world at their time so they don't get big headed about something we just discovered and I can be humble about where we might go next. Because you can see who got their stuff right and most of the people who got their stuff wrong. So one, one issue, a little one, but an issue nonetheless. So 100% accuracy on the first and one out of 59 as an issue on the second. But getting the content off, again, is super easy and super painless. Thank you so much for watching. Do hit subscribe for more content like this in the future. And you can help me out a ton by liking and sharing the video with others. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. And if you want to chat further, come by the Knowledge Workers Discord. I'll have a link to that and everything else that I mentioned in today's video down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also be interested in my guide on getting your e-ink notes into Notion and Obsidian. All that linked over here on the side. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.